Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be high body count women. So I've got an interesting email. This is from a guy, met a girl on a dating app. Right away, she was complimenting him, sending, revealing pictures. She texted him right away. So they met, had a date, but she wasn't real talkative, and he noticed a lot of red flags and what's interesting is when he first matched with her they talked for a little bit he's like i've met enough women on these dating apps to know the red flags when i see them and so he basically unmatched from her and was like screw this and then she reached out a day or two later asked him to meet they met i won't give away what happened next but it's a really interesting story because you see her behavior and she's also right out, I guess she had just broken up with her boyfriend. And so it's interesting when you see how she behaves. And so obviously we're going to talk about not only women, because it's a woman in this particular moment, but men and women who sleep around and have really high body counts and what it means and why people do that. So the quote says, men and women who sleep around and have really high body counts tend to look at other human beings as disposable commodities. They exhibit psychopathic behavior. They don't love, value, or respect themselves, and most of their relationships tend to be superficial and without any real depth or meaning. They share their bodies with many partners, just hoping to connect and feel something. However, you can't give away what you don't already have for yourself. The reality is that very few friends and lovers you will meet over the course of your life will feel like a soulful connection. Share your bodies only after you have shared your souls. People who are truly interested in you will care about you, your hopes, your dreams, your goals, your values, your passions, your life, and truly wish you well because they care and want to celebrate and rejoice in your victories and successes. We had a video that we did with Gracie and Chunky, I don't know, last week or the week before, talking about high body count. And it, it elicited some very strong reactions and judgment from a lot of people that got butthurt about it. It was a lot of fun. And we have more we'll be talking about in the future. So with that said, let's go through this guy's email and see what we can see. So the other, the thing that I want you guys to look at is, is her behavior, her demeanor. Does she sound like somebody that loves and cares about herself? Or is she just throwing her body away at just anybody? Because that's also not healthy, especially if you're one of those guys that likes to go in the raw. And every single guy that I know, every friend I've had, every dude I've ever met that has a really super high body count... They always catch something, and oftentimes they catch many things. And if you don't want to get the gift that keeps on giving, you at least need to wear a raincoat. But the reality is a lot of guys, they just don't fucking care. And I, I remember I had a, a video newsletter I got, I did, I don't know, a few years ago. There was a guy, he'd, he was traveling and met this girl, and she was hot. It was, she was really in him. He was really into her. He had sex with her in the raw he ended up getting, uh, I think it was herpes from her. And when he c confronted her about it a few weeks later, it's like she didn't deny it. It was almost like she just didn't care. I mean, she had the attitude of, hey, somebody gave it to me. Pfft, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm a car met right back. I'm going to just give it to somebody else and screw them. And so statistically, numerically, when you're sleeping around, especially if you're doing it in the raw, it's just a matter of time before you get a gift that keeps on giving. So everything has consequences in life. And if you're just sleeping around with people, because I, I experience, I'll be honest with you, I can't call it kettle black. I mean, when I was in my early 20s, early 30s, and before things like really clicked, there were quite a few women that I got together with. It's like the next day they left, and you're like, you never see them again. I mean, you were cool to never see them again. But for me, it always felt like I kind of wasted my essence. Because I just, it's like glorified masturbation. I've said this many times over the years. It's, my book is all about attracting the woman of your dreams, not just some random average chick that will have sex with you. Because the reality is there's lots of women, if you're a guy, there's lots of women that will have sex with you. But how many of them are you going to really bond and connect with and want to see a second and third and fourth time, wake up with, 
every morning with her naked in your arms six months a year two years three years later 10 or 15 years later and still love those moments and those memories that you create together it's just like having great friends how many great friends do you get together with that every time you leave you always feel like your life is better because they're in it definitely something to think about for me i like relationships that have deep meaning where i spend my time with people that i care about and who actually care about me because the world is full of people that will take advantage of you they'll blow sunshine up your ass they want your business they want your money they want the influence they can get from you they want access to your peer group or your resources whatever it happens to be especially as you become more successful in life you get people wanting to be your friend in reality they just want access to what you got and when you lose that all like i talked about in mastering yourself in my case i invested it all in my new business and was starting over a lot of people that i thought cared about me and were my friends realized they didn't give a shit but as soon as i started doing well again they're like hey i knew you i knew you'd always figure it out i knew it'd work out for you hey let's get together you really see when you go through a difficult time who actually cares and who doesn't super important so he says hey Corey, i just wanted to say you're awesome and whenever i screw up or have difficulty understanding a situation with a woman i go to your book and videos but this is very different from the many women i've dated please let me know if my assumptions were correct <clears throat> recently i got back into online dating and matched with a woman who was quick to text my number complimenting my looks sending a revealing picture of herself and agreeing to meet right off the bat so it could have been super high interest or she's just looking to get she's looking to get railed maybe she's running away from something maybe she had a breakup maybe she's just trying maybe she's got daddy issues and she gets validation and attention from many different men and one of the things that gracie was talking about in the high body count video is that she had a girlfriend that was sleeping around with guys obviously had daddy issues and she's kind of a coach to her friends and it's like she's the one that people always come to for advice and she was helping this girl because she's a very empathetic person and obviously people savaged her in the comments i blocked a lot of assholes because i'm not going to tolerate people fucking with those that i care about my guests or my family or my friends but it's just interesting is like we all know people that are like this maybe they come from broken homes or there's a parent missing or it was a bad home and you'll see that and like in, in her case she had a girlfriend that obviously had some issues and was seeking validation and attention in the bed of just random men so it's not a good way to go because it's just something that's going to leave you feeling empty like i said it's like glorified masturbation it's hard to wait for somebody that you really like and you really connect with, especially when you're impatient and you want something to happen. And most people get too impatient. A lot of women marry guys that they're not in love with. A lot of guys end up marrying women that are average or mediocre because they don't have the confidence to get what they really want or the ability to get what they really want. And so they live lives of quiet desperation and they're not happy people if you don't love yourself you don't love your life you don't love the people that you're in relationship with why go to the gym why eat healthy why take care of your body if you're giving your body away like it means nothing you're also going to treat your body like it means nothing that's unfortunately what i mean i was talking about this in a previous video 74 percent of americans are either obese or they're overweight i mean that's like three quarters of the population just doesn't give a fuck it means nothing to them they don't care and you can look at video from 20 years ago 30 years ago and most people were thin i remember when i was in high school there was only a handful of people in our class that were overweight or fat and now it's just you just go outside and you look around and it's like everybody is fucking supersized it's pretty sad and pretty depressing and as a man or a woman for that matter just being in shape and looking good you set yourself apart from most of the competition makes things pretty easy when you're one of the few people that take care of yourself i mean it's just a sad state of affairs that we as a society have just supersized ourselves because we're so unhappy we try to fill ourselves up with food try to fill up what is emotionally missing with food 
Because when you eat something, it changes your state. And so the food becomes like a drug. It's a state change. And the more you eat, the bigger you get because you're trying to change your state. It's no bueno. And so in this particular case, women that, because if you've ever read anything about narcissism, women that tend to love bomb and just really full of praise right out of the gate, it's like they blow you up and then a few weeks in, they start tearing you down and causing you to to doubt yourself because deep down, they have a really low opinion of themselves. And so if they can make you have a low opinion of yourself, then they feel great about themselves. So you got to watch out for this behavior. He says, she's a kindergarten teacher on summer break. I've had sexual encounters and dating and texting sessions with many women to know the red flags. Well, the good thing about a teacher is when you do something wrong, she makes you do it over and over and over again. After this brief encounter, I decided to unmatch and go on without thinking about it. Yeah, she's a little too aggressive. Almost to the point where she seems kind of needy and desperate, like she's looking for something. Two days later, she got a hold of me to see if I still wanted to meet. Out of curiosity, I complied since it's been nearly four months without a date. So this guy's thinking four months. It's like I'm tired of waiting. Nothing's happened yet. I haven't met when it was really great women that come along two one i say one to three times a decade maybe they just set your soul on fire it's so fucking rare and so you can see why most people settle they don't want to wait they don't want to hold out and when somebody comes along that matches a lot of their qualities like well i guess this is as good as it's gonna get they do the same thing with jobs and everything else in their life their friends their peer group the first date she was late but only by 15 minutes oh only 15 minutes. So you want a woman who's reliable and dependable and who keeps her word. And if you have your first date and she's 15 minutes late, it's like, does she respect herself? Does she respect you? Does she respect your time? I know everybody in my life, they always show up on time. And if they can't make it, something comes up occasionally, yeah. But first date, it's not a good impression. I mean, think about it. Do you think she's showing up late to her kindergarten class? Not happening. I instantly began talking to her, smiling and being outgoing, so she would open up and she never did. It's not a good sign. Women who are healthy and have their shit together, when you ask them a question, they'll speak from their heart and they'll tell you. They'll want you to know and they'll be glad that you asked. People that don't have a high opinion of themselves when you ask them something. Like I remember I, I met a girl, this is probably eight or nine months ago. Beautiful. We started talking. She didn't obviously live in my city, but it's like I remember we started talking one night. We were we were FaceTime, and I asked her some personal questions about herself because I was genuinely curious. I really wanted to know, and she just paused and looked at me with a smile. And it's like she like wouldn't answer. She was really evasive about it. She had a missing father in her life, obviously, and she wasn't used to somebody getting to know her and actually really wanting to know what made her tick and what she was about. Whereas other women I've been with, women I wrote about in 3% Man, you you can't have a healthy relationship with somebody if they're, they won't tell you what's going on and what they're thinking and what they're feeling. It should be easy and effortless. And when it's not, that should be a major red flag. And in this case, he's trying to get her to open up and talk. So it's like almost like she's there for one reason. I wonder what that reason could be. She didn't engage in conversation at all. She smiled once at one of my jokes, never faced me, and seemed distant. Kind of almost seems like a hooker, you know? I began to wonder why and went back to my instincts and the red flags I got from her. I asked, and I know I shouldn't have, but at this point, it didn't make a difference. So in other words, he didn't really give a shit. He says, he asked her how many guys she had met from the app since her and her boyfriend split supposedly two months ago. Listen to this answer. She said, I don't know, but a lot. She belongs to the streets, baby. I was concerned at that point because of her mannerisms previously. It added up. So she's looking for validation and getting her insides rearranged and having random dudes beat up her pelvis, hoping she'll feel something. Maybe her boyfriend screwed her over and she feels like she's getting back at him. 
It's another reason why oftentimes if you, when you break up with your girlfriend, she'll go and sleep with two of your friends or two or three dudes that you know. It's interesting. It's just a way to go, fuck you. I left to the bathroom and came back a minute later to her paying the bill. I assume she felt bad. I confirmed to myself she was essentially wasting my time, so I quit talking as much as before. And she mentioned the awkward silence, and I said, everything is okay, let's leave. We went to my apartment, and within five minutes was having sex. She wanted me to lay in bed with her afterwards. I complied, and one more stop at a bar for a drink, and we departed. Boy, that sounds like really exciting. So it's like, hey, let's, <clears throat> let's get together. Let's have sex, but let's not get to know each other at all because I don't really care. I don't care to get to know you. You know, in this case, she's trying to get to know her a little bit and she's just, she's not interested. And on top of that, she's not participating in the conversation. So she's not asking him personal questions about himself or his life. And again, this is something else that I talk about in 3% Man. Women that are interested and women that care and that are normal and healthy will want to know about your hopes and dreams. They will actually ask you questions and be excited to hear what your answer is and women that don't that are psychopathic this they'll behave just like this chick so he says the second date the next day i texted her asking if she would like to meet up again come on man i don't know how well you are into my work or you read the book but that's not what the book teaches she said yes i would love to and asked me a day that would work on the day i confirmed with her so he's confirming dates too he's got to be new to the, my work and she said yes i'll be 30 minutes late and she was an hour late she really seems to care about you an hour late she really really does care true story do you think she'd show up an hour late to class to teach the kindergarten students a bunch of kids not gonna happen why because she cares about her job she probably cares about the kids but she has a date with you, a guy she fucked with no strings attached, and she shows up an hour late. That's kind of passive aggressive behavior. Just probably kind of doing it on purpose because she doesn't respect you. She invited herself into my secure apartment building and texted me telling me she was coming up. I was caught off guard by this thinking, how rude. Well, she was just obviously coming up for the hot beef injection, my man. Upon arrival, she instantly demanded we get something neat. I was caught off guard again as we agreed to talk about it when we show up. Hey, I want a meal for the free pussy. She belongs in the streets. If you're expecting me to put out, you better buy me some food. She proceeded to tell me I should have a place ready when she got there. Well, in all fairness, you should know if you're inviting your girl out for a date, you should have that shit figured out ahead of time. He's a little psychopathic himself. I mentioned that we agreed to talk about it, and she just smiled for the second time and said nothing. Yeah. How are you going to have a relationship with a woman who just says nothing? Like the girl was talking about who just... When I asked her a personal question, I was like, well, that was weird. That's not normal. At the restaurant, she was saying close to nothing to me, nothing to the waiter and looking around. She must have really liked, liked being there. She mentioned the awkward silence again. You're supposed to entertain me. Entertain me, feed me, and fuck me. That's what she was there for. Entertain me. Feed me. Fuck me. She belongs to the streets. <clears throat> she mentioned the awkward silence again, and I told her that it takes two to have a date, and if she would have a conversation with me, there wouldn't be any silence. Boy, this is a swell hanging out with people like this. She instantly wanted to leave, told me I was rude, that I have issues to work on. No one will ever do or say anything to you that isn't a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves in a moment. And Sped walked to her car and that was it. Well, you, she got a free meal, but there was no fucking in the end on the second date. 
Well, if I were you, my man, I would go get checked out. Hopefully you didn't bang her in the raw because you're obviously not the only dude that she's doing it with. So it would be helpful if you read 3% Man, but you got to understand, a lot of guys are going to date women like this. Ah, I can work with this. And then they get into a relationship with a chick like this and they wonder why it's a train wreck. And then they end up in the toxic part of the red pill community going, all women are the same. So if you think about it from this perspective, if that's your attitude, if all women are the same and you always attract the same kind of women, that's your belief about the world. And guess what? You're gonna t That's going to command your brain to do. Find me more of those kinds of women. So you'll actually go out and keep attracting the same kind of women and it becomes a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then you go in the toxic red pill forums and you complain that all women suck they're all a bunch of whores. Hypergamy. It's not. She's not yours. It's she's. It's just your turn. How is that shit gonna help you attract better quality women? If you're still fishing out of the fucking sewer, and you're spending your time with psychopathic women that don't value themselves, what does it say about you? It says that you don't value yourselves. And if you don't value yourself, nobody else will either. And that's definitely something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help personally, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. Yeah.